My name is Patricia Hunt, but I am called Pat by everybody. I live now at Kendall, which is a continuing care retirement community. I was born in Alberta, Canada. A family of four daughters, a, a pioneer farmer who really would have got, been glad to have some sons to carry <laughs> on. But as it has evolved, we've all, one by one, come to the United States and now live primarily on the East Coast. I started off through my early years in Seattle, Washington, through high school after we left Alberta and ended up at Swarthmore College, which was my first step into becoming connected to Quakers. Well, again, through my brother-in-law, David, I learned that Clarence, who was then General Secretary of the American Friends Service Committee, was in Mexico with his family to consider possible program to meet the needs of Spanish refugees mm -hmm. who had fled to Mexico because of the Civil War in Spain and needed a translator. So I was happily recruited and got to know the family. Clarence took me under his wing mm -hmm. and when I got back to the Swarthmore College I was invited to AFSC events. When I graduated from Columbia in 47, I went to Finland under AFSC. I, had, I expected to spend the summer in the work camp and come back to a job that I'd been offered as a result of my field work. But uh, the work camp really was, I would say, was my life-changing moment. We were, at that point, Finland, you may know, was, had suffered severely from the uh, German war. They were caught between Germany and Russia, and they first had Russian invasion, then they had German invasion, and on the departure of the German troops in the last days of the war, the policy was a scorched earth policy and I had heard that term but didn't realize it meant every telephone pole, every well with land mines in them, every field and the bridges destroyed and this was in far Lapland and as a result the people had been had fled and to return to their little villages way off in this wild north or wilderness north, the women often are coming back, with, or the men coming back to start rebuilding their houses, would be blown up by the mines that were in the wells or in the fields. So this was a double blow to a, to a widow who lost even her husband who'd survived the war. Just chron chronologically, after Finland, I was asked by AFSC to become a staff, the coordinator of the International Work Camp Program in Europe, and I, I did that from from 47, which was the summer I was in Finland, through to 49, two years. And in that period, I was the coordinator with the other peace work camp organizations in Europe. The work camp movement started in Finland, in Switzerland, in in the, between the two world wars, by Pierre Sarasol, a pacifist. This was an this was his effort to have an alternative service that was not under the military, but equally as as disciplined and as hard work and as committed as somebody who would go in the military, as, as instead of under military, under civilian, the service civil, so it was civil service. And, and their 
motto was Pas de parole, mais des actes, meaning not words but deeds. Mm -hmm. And the this organization had branches in six or eight of the European countries, and including England, and was a very already had had work and often short term, like one or two week work camps that coincided with workers' holidays. So they often had working men, primarily, and Svestern, or sisters, as they called them. In Korea, we started the relief program, which was a five-year rehabilitation of a provincial hospital that had been bombed by, you know, the U.S. Air Force in its war against the North Koreans. And our work there was half the hospital work and North Korean refugee women, primarily, and children, widows. And I was working on the refugee side. One year I worked part-time to get set up the visa program, 1960 to 61. And the visa program was building on the international work camps, but recognizing, A, the impracticality or more and more of young people paying their own way, or, or alternatively, AFSC having enough money to fund mm -hmm. travel and expenses. And I think the design that you have come up with in QVS meets so many of the challenges. One, as I said before, useful work. And it is not physical labor now, but it's skill, um, uh, commitment, dedication, you know, management, organization, things that you kind of grow up with in our society and our education obviously enhances. At the same time as making it practical so that people of all levels of income can participate. And that the organization that that there's that are willing to or need them as staff acknowledge that they are valuable enough to be paid for mm -hmm. in a regular way, not full salary, mm -hmm. but enough at least to en uh, enable them to be living together and working. And so I think there's a dignity in that on both sides, mm -hmm. uh, both the young person knowing that they are needed because they get money. And secondly, that the uh, organization takes this seriously, mm -hmm. that they're here with a regular job to be done and requiring performance mm -hmm. and standard of performance, which is important, so that you live in this real world of the adult working world. Mm -hmm. And it's a step forward for a person to put on their resume. They've done something very practical. But it, at the same time, the living together in a community of fellow students, fellow fellows, <laughs> just fellows, isn't it yeah. now? Uh -huh. um, so that there's a chance for worship together, to talking together, to listening to each other's experiences, enhancing what you've learned, bringing your problems to each other. I think that in itself is another learning, growing, mm -hmm. and in a way, supportive experience and I think all of that leads to an experience that is enhancing the individuals and any of them who happen to be also Quakers, certainly enhancing the Society of Friends by bringing this kind of leadership in. You know, there's a new era ahead. We've got to face the challenge of what's now here. This is where we need young people with the energy and the insight and the knowledge in our meetings and, and in our society. And I think QVS is a hotbed of <laughs> revolution, I hope. <laughs> Constructive revolution, because we really need some basic changes.